Yate, Justin Pyrochin, she, Ashihin, and Slim, Bitani, Bashishin, Kini Ani, the Shiche, Kodichini, the Shinella. Hi, my name is Justin Paiochi and I am chef and owner of Paiochi Food Group and I am represented uh, here on behalf of Navajo Ethno Agriculture and we just wanted to acknowledge the Intertribal Agriculture Council as well of, as well as the Net Claw Beef which we are going to be working with today. So today what we're going to be doing is uh, showing you how to cook a meal with a lot of the basic ingredients that you find most of the time in your pantry. And uh, we have, like I mentioned before, Danette Claw beef today. We have um, some ground beef from their farm, as well as a couple other goodies from the farm as well here at Navajo Ethno Agriculture. So I have picked some, um, a lot of people call this Navajo spinach. Um, it's basically amaranth and it grows wild here on the farm. It's kind of our weeds, they're kind of taking over, but they're so delicious. I mean, you can saute them. I've dehydrated them before as a chip. Um, you can also stew them as well, just like you do with spinach and whatnot. And so have some also some little um, red leaf lettuces that I've been growing out on the farm. They're not growing too big right now because of the heat and uh, a lot of the weeds, like I said, are taking over. But I managed to get a couple of these as well for our dish today. I also have been growing some nasturtiums. Here are some leaves that we have uh, off the top. They haven't flowered yet, but these are still really, really beautiful. They have a nice... Uh, peppery kind of almost wasabi like texture uh, taste to it like a little bite and so I'm gonna put these in the, the dish as well um, a lot of Navajos don't really cook with this this is called Huitlacoche and this is actually what they call corn smut and um, I really enjoy it we they call it a Mexican truffle it usually grows every once in a while on different types of corn and um, yeah we we're lucky to have one of these today I also have some baby amaranth as well that I picked from the farm. They're really, really beautiful underneath. I, as you can see, they have a purple hue underneath when you flip the, the leaf upside down. And we're going to add those as well too. There's also some lamb's quarter, which is another weed as, you can, as, you, as I was mentioning earlier. But these also can be treated just the same way as I was talking about with the amaranth. You can stew them, you can fry them, you can uh, turn them into chips or whatever you would like to. So we're going to add that into this. Uh, to the meal today got some um, sunflowers we're just gonna add as a um, little bit of garnish to the end of the meal make it look nice and uh, also so a couple of little other accents here's a radish from the farm as well some little cherry little tomatoes teardrops a shallot some um, serrano peppers for a little bit of heat and this is actually a, a butternut from last year's harvest it's a big guy right here He's going to be making uh, making our dish nice and hearty today and also another squash that's not really quite ready but we're still going to use it anyway um, they're really really nice if you pickle it or if you even shave it like really really thin you use it fresh and so the emphasis today like i said we're just going to be cooking with a lot of ingredients that you might find in your pantry and um, show that this can be easy it can be fun and also can be really really healthy too if you take the right approach so what we're going to do first is going to take this uh, big guy here at the end there's um inside of here there's a little hollow part with all the seeds and up here is more of just the solid mass so i'm going to take the end off of here it's a little bit too rough to be using on this dish right now and we don't have need a whole lot for this so i'm going to just take that part as you can see the seeds go all the way down to the middle we're not going to be using that today but i like to take the um the skin off just because it's a little rough we're going to dice it down and start getting it going into the pan because this is going to take the longest so we're going to get that going first important to be, uh, be careful when you're cutting especially with a sharp knife a sharp knife is actually more safe than a dull knife a dull knife will run off and you can run as uh, barely uh, run off the side and then nick yourself whereas a sharp knife will actually make sure that it goes all the way straight through it makes nice cuts and so what i'm doing is making a little bit of small cubes about about an inch inch in diameter or not yeah thickness and just be careful the way you hold the your fingers back right here make a little wall so that's kind of aiming for you while you're cutting from the go from the top of the knife work your way down to let the knife do the work rather than pushing down the whole time you can go from the top all the way to the end like i said let the knife do the work and you can use any um, starchy vegetable for this dish. I just chose to use a squash because it seems like it's more relevant and um, 
apparent in people's pantries most of the time. It's just sitting there. Nobody's really doing a whole lot with it. So I have some olive oil here. Get it going in a hot pan. Make sure your pan is hot. You don't want to put uh, anything cold into a cold pan because you're not cooking yet. So we'll get that going here. We're just going to let that brown and uh, before it gets too soft, we're going to start cooking the ground beef as well and mix it all together. While that's going, I'm going to go ahead and get um, the onion cut as well. About the same, it doesn't have to be the same size. We're just going to use this for flavor. So when you're dicing stuff, a good um, tool of, um, I guess, uh, op op trying to dice, go about dicing it, I guess you can say, is I always go uh, sliding down this way and then come across again like that. Turn the onion the other way and just come straight down. You get nice uniform dices. And people always throw away these little ends on onions. I always cook it because it's totally edible and I, um, it's actually really, really good eating. And I always like to salt my food in stages because um, salt will actually change its character throughout the cooking process. So if you salt a little bit here and there, starting from the very beginning, uh, you're not going to have just a strong salty taste when, when you salt everything at the very, very end. It actually mellows down and actually uh, flavors the food that you're cooking with from start to end. So we'll just go with a little bit for now. And you don't want to add pepper too soon because pepper burns, salt actually dissolves. You now at Piloty Food Group, we actually have a dish called Textures of Squash where we highlight seven different types of textures of squash. So we'll take the squash, we'll pickle it, we'll turn it into a puree. We'll even throw this whole thing into the, a fire and then use the uh, outside burn part and mix it with some salt and use it as a, a, as a seasoning for the end of the dish. And so we always, we try to highlight um, every part of the, the squash is edible. I mean, it's a big part of Navajo food and culture. So we feel it's a dish that we really hold dear to our heart and we hope that someday we get to feed you as well. So we're going to get the onions going. Squash is getting a little bit soft so I think it's perfect timing for that. I also have some garlic here that I peeled. Fresher is better. We're just going to make little slivers. You don't have to go that fast. You can take your time. Remember, safety first. Oh, whoops. Almost stirred that with my hand. And I keep losing all my squash too. I wish you could smell this because it smells delicious already. That's going really well. Let's turn that down a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and get the ground beef going. So we're gonna get some more oil in the pan. As you can see, that's hot. So this is from Dinette Claw Beef out in Shiprock, New Mexico. Just that in there. cooking ground beef you want to make sure that you cook it all the way through it's not like a steak you actually need to cook ground beef all the way till it's done so make sure your meat is well done and then we're gonna add it together and we're gonna make um, kind of a take on gravy for this dish Rightness. we're gonna add a little bit of jalapeno or serrano for some some heat
And don't forget to salt, remember, from beginning to end. So we'll salt the beef as well. We'll let this rest for a little bit. Yep, those are done. With this squash here, I think I'm gonna use it as some garnish. So I have a little peeler here called the mandolin. And I'm just gonna take this, it's called a little mini mandolin. And take them, run it across. And now we have some nice little slivers, um, ribbons we like to call them. That'll be a nice garnish for this. Nice. I'm gonna go ahead and add another little garlic clove to that as well. Building some flavor in here. I'm gonna take this shallot. Oops. If you don't have shallots, um, onions totally fine. I just happen to have this in the pantry and so we're gonna use it. Rough chop. Now comes the fun part. So we have some beef broth from the pantry as well. We're gonna make a little bit of a gravy, like I said. So we're gonna deglaze the pan, add a little bit extra. But we don't want it too soupy. So I added about a cup and a half or so to 10 ounces of beef. I'm gonna let that simmer. I have some cornstarch here. I like using cornstarch just because it doesn't take so long for the uh, flour like when you usually typically use flour, it doesn't take so long for it to actually thicken and the, um, the, 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 the wheat actually has to cook. Whereas um, cornstarch is kind of a little bit less, of course it's gluten free, but to me it just adds like a really, really nice shine to um, when you're trying to thicken up sauces or anything like this in particular. So I have some cold water here. So this is a, probably a little too much. We're going to do about yeah, like a tablespoon's worth. A little bit of change. And then about one, two, about two tablespoons of water. Let's mix that up really, really well. This is called a slurry, cornstarch slurry. I'm pretty sure you've seen your grandmas do this before when they're making um, gravies and stuff like that. And like I said, you can use flour if you want to, but I just prefer cornstarch. So this is up to a boil. And watch this, it's gonna thicken up really, really quickly. Sugar. it's already thickening up it has that nice sheen look to it beautiful give it a taste definitely need some salt some pepper and I always like to add a little dash of Tabasco with my food because it adds a little bit of heat but also adds that little bit of um uh, vinegar to brighten up the dish as well. So let's stir it up again. Mmm, money. 
We're gonna pick some of these uh, amaranth leaves off and we're gonna add it to the um, to the little hash that we have over here. Oh, actually that's still on. So some of the bigger leaves will be fine. Baby ones, they won't hurt as well. We're just gonna treat it like spinach today. Like I said, these grow wild on the farm. Um, there are places where you can actually buy the seeds and grow it yourself. There's different kinds of amaranth. There's green, there's also red. Um, this one just happens to be um, what it likes to grow around here in this area. So we'll add the amaranth to the plate or to the skillet. We're gonna take our nice um, tomatoes that we had here, brighten up the dish a little bit. And as we add things, don't forget to salt just a little bit. Salting in stages. And we also have the lamb's quarter, as I pointed out earlier as well. Just treating it like spinach again. And I'm going to save the little baby ones for garnish at the end of the dish. I like how purple and just how beautiful they look. We've got the gravy down. This is almost ready to go. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of stock just to freshen up the vegetables. Nice. I'll take some of this nice hash that we made with the um, butternut squash, the um, onions, garlic, tomatoes, and um, amaranth, as well as the lamb's quarter. Put some of this on top. Put a little bit of the gravy all over it. And now for the garnish. Take some of these little red leaves. Some of our nasturtiums. Baby amaranth. Some of our little uh, shavings that we made with the squash. There's a little fun technique I like to do. Just wrap it around your finger. It makes like little, little um, cylinders. And like we said before, this is a lot of stuff that people usually find in your pantries that nobody really wants to mess with too much. But hopefully after seeing this, it'll inspire some of you to think outside the box and make something out of nothing. Do a couple more ribbons. Take some sunflowers, just brighten up the dish. A 
And there you have it. Simple meal made with simple ingredients right from your pantry. So here we have the finished product of um, the, the food that we were cooking earlier. I just wanted to go ahead and say thank you to uh, Paiochi Food Group, my team, as well as everybody over at Navajo Ethno Agriculture for all the support that they give us. Everybody over at Inner Tribal Agriculture Council as well for all the work that you do, the fine products that you put out, uh, Matt Netclaw and his beef that he brought as well. And thank you again as well for uh, tuning in. Uh, we hope to feed you sometime in the future. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook. We also have a website, powertrufoodgroup.com. There's also Navajo Ethno who is actually on Instagram and Facebook and we also have a YouTube channel as well where we highlight a lot of different foods that we use on the farm uh, including this uh, we have uh, the textures of squash video that I was telling you about earlier and we all, you can find them at navajofarming.org and Intertribal Agricultural Council as well um, you can find them on the internet they're also on Instagram Facebook and Thank you again for all that you've done and we hope you get to make this at home someday for your family and we hope you enjoy and we'll see you next time.